Hey guys, it is Mike from Baltimore Rides. It's daytime and you're wondering where is my Friday night video? Well, technically this is it, but it's a little bit weird. I'm not going to lie. So I, um, I've been contemplating doing this for a while, never really had the gusto to do it. And I decided last night that I was just going to do it. So Last night, you know, we're talking again about Friday. Um, here's what I did. I went out on the road about noon, one o'clock. I got to DC by about two o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, Lyft was my primary app. Uber was my backup. But I decided that I was going to work straight through the night and that I was going to wrap up in DC and then go to BWI to catch the 4 a.m. business. And that's kind of what I did. So let me kind of give you a breakdown of how the night went. Um, and let's kind of call it my DC business versus what happened afterwards. So the night went pretty steady. I wouldn't say it was an amazing night. It really was not a busy Friday night in DC. I mean, that's a clear answer for sure. It was just not busy in DC yesterday, but it was steady. And so I did $152 with Lyft and about $95 with Uber while I was in DC. Then, I did about 50 more dollars with Uber this, with Lyft this morning. And so what happened was I got to the BWI airport about 4 a.m., 3.45, 4 a.m. after I got some breakfast. And I was still feeling pretty full of energy at that point. I hadn't run out of steam. I wasn't really starting to get sleepy at that point. So I logged in with Lyft. Again, I'm, I'm focusing on Lyft because I have a, a bonus I'm shooting towards. Uber has not given me any incentives yet. I, I don't really know what's going on with that, but I'm done sending them messages and I'm done calling them. You know, at this point, I've done everything on my part I can. It's up to them really to decide, do they want to or don't they? And that's not really my, my say, it's theirs. So, um, so I got to the airport, I left my Lyft app running, I did not even log into Uber at the airport. And I got uh, the very first ride that I got, which didn't take long because I came into the queue at like, you know, 17, 18, something like that. Um, you know, so within about an hour, by about, let's say 5, 5.30, I got a ride request to, and ironically enough, to take me from BWI to Reagan because somebody's flight got canceled and they were redirecting them to Reagan for a, a flight out. So I raced down to Reagan, and then I got a couple small fares from Reagan that put me basically in about the $50 range. Um, and I drove around DC for a few minutes longer because there was some early morning um, surge. I'm gonna call it like prime time surge. I don't care what, what word we're using for it. You know, there was some early morning activity, but it, it evaporated fairly quickly because it's Saturday morning. So then I decided that, okay, let me go to, to Baltimore and see if I can get any final business. And I did a couple trips in Baltimore, very small dollars, nothing really exciting. And then the Lyft app said, hey, you need to take a six hour nap. So my plan is to work through today. I have not gone home yet. So the last time I saw home was Friday at noon, 12.30 when I left the house. I'm gonna keep working tonight. I'm on my way to DC now, it's about two o'clock. I should be there by about 3, 3.15. And I'm gonna work Uber for about an hour or so until about four o'clock, which is kind of the six, six hour reset for Lyft. And then I'm gonna start back all over again for Lyft. And, I, you know, my goal is to, I don't know how to put this, you know, honestly, my goal is to make as much money as I can this weekend. Um, I'm going to work straight through the night again tonight and then go to 
BWI this, you know, Sunday early, Sunday morning, see if I can catch some Sunday morning flights. Um, if I can get there early enough into the queue and then stay on the road for probably, you know, a good por portion of Sunday before I finally call it quits. And then I'm going to take Monday off and crash. Now, a lot of you guys are thinking to yourselves, holy crap, Mike, what are you doing? But, you know, look at it this way. It's my kids have been off school most of this week because of the cold temperatures. Lucky's been sick, you know, just blah, blah, blah. A lot of different reasons. And they were off all last week and they saw a good bit of me both of those weeks. So rather than going home and sleeping for, you know, eight hours plus, which is really what I do, I crash when I get home. And then having to get back up, race back to DC, and potentially missing business and that power hour bonus, this keeps me active. Like I got two or three trips this morning during the eight to 10 uh, power hour. And before it conked out and said I needed to take a break for six hours. So, you know, this is a strange marathon weekend, but it's kind of a, an interesting one because if I can grind and I can do another hundred dollars with Uber today and another I don't know 150 to 200 with Lyft tonight then I can put some significant dollars on the board in a two and a half day period um, and that's really my goal is to put some significant money on the board because um, you know I got bills just like everybody else and you know, I'm like everybody else at this point in time in January where, you know, they overspent for the holidays. They've got to play catch up a little bit on their bills because, um, you know, they spent too much. And that's what people do. I mean, I have holiday shopping. I have all the stuff that goes along with my daughter's Nutcracker performances that costs money. Nothing's, you know, that ain't free. Um, you know, the studio makes you pay to, to have your kid perform. Then you got to buy tickets to see it. Then she needs supplies for it. I mean, it's... So it's a money-making scheme, the whole thing. And, um, you know, and so December became an expensive month. And then on top of that, as you guys know, a lot of you have been on the road with me, it's not been an easy month to make money. You know, weather's been a little bit weird. The holiday season was a little bit weird. People were kind of not getting rides that first few days between Christmas and New Year's. Um, honestly, the last few days before Christmas were slow. So, you know, perfect storm being what it is, I've got to make some money so I can get, you know, get myself back on track for 2018. I really don't want to be in debt in 2018. And so my goal is to get out of what little bit of debt I've put myself into for the holidays as quickly as I can. So I'm hustling. And that's just plain and simple. Um, and I think I can do it. If, if Fridays and Saturdays, and for some extent Sundays are your target audience, are the days when you're gonna make the most money and be the most active and busy. Why not just work them to the bone? Why not just work them to the bone? It's not always conducive to everybody. It's physically a challenging. I mean, I, I literally got to Towson after I went straight through the city. Um, I got to Towson, I got something to eat. I found a nice, warm, sunny parking lot, you know, with my car on idle, which doesn't use a lot of gas because it's an economy car. It took a good two and a half, three hour power nap. Um, got back up, went to the supermarket, you know, got some protein, got some yogurt, got some water to rehydrate and uh, used the restroom, brushed my teeth and back at it, back at it. And so it's a weird kind of marathon. It's a very weird kind of marathon. I'm not sure I can do it every day or every week or whatever, but obviously why not try it and see what the results are? And so far they've been pleasant. I mean, I basically in the past 24 hours, you know, cause it's almost 24 hours. It's two o'clock now on Saturday. I started this whole endeavor on two o'clock on Friday. I've made a hundred dollars, 90 something dollars with Uber and I've made $200 with Lyft between this morning and last night. So, that's a $300 day right there, if you add it up that way, um, you know, in that, in that 24 hour span. 
Now, you know, will it get me the same results tonight? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, but my new strategy, because Uber's not being nice right now, they're, they're not giving me the love, is that Uber's going to be my gas card and my lease payment. I'm just going to keep putting enough trips in it to, uh, to fund the gas card and to fund the lease payment on the vehicle. And then everything else is going to be um, Lyft. Lyft's payouts are pretty good, guys. I mean, the average trip was like a $9, $10 trip. The average per hour when I looked at it was like $19, $20, $18, $20 an hour last night. The couple times I checked at it. You know, so I was grinding and I was making good money. There weren't a lot of long trips in there, but there were a couple and they helped the average out. I'm not gonna lie. You know, you get a couple good long fares in there and it definitely helps your average. Um, and I'll take those, you know. Sometimes that's just the luck of the draw. But it was also a lot of little trips, just hopping around, a lot of pool rides. Um, southeast and Northeast are very good hunting grounds. You know, U Street was really disappointing last night, and I will talk about this, I've talked about it several times, but U Street at bar closing is very disappointing. And it wasn't because it was quiet, it was because it's super saturated with drivers. And I started my night in Southeast, I drove kind of all around the city, because rides take you everywhere. But I kept making my way to the east side of DC, northeast or southeast, because those areas get the least amount of love from Uber drivers. They really do. You know, a lot of Uber drivers don't want to go over there. They don't want to drive in southeast. They don't want to drive in northeast because they're rougher neighborhoods. They're sketchier neighborhoods. And I'm not being mean. I'm just being truthful. And I think a lot of drivers are wimps. I think a lot of drivers are afraid to go in the hood. And I'm not, you know, I'm not. If you treat people the right way and they treat you the right way, everybody's copacetic, you know? Were there a couple times where my customers stank of weed and I had to like lower all my windows in 10 degree weather and kind of vent my car after they got out? Yeah. You know, they were definitely a little funky, but there were a couple times when you know, I got people that were going to work or coming home from work, you know, second, third shift, you know, $7 trip, and they're giving me a three, $4 tip. So, you know, they're good people. They're willing to pay somebody, um, you know, to give them a ride because a lot of times they don't own cars um, and transportation's expensive. And so, you know, they just need to get from to and from where they're going like the rest of us. That's, that's the fair way to look at it. So... You know, the Burbs, Silver Spring, Hyattsville, Bethesda, College Park, Suitland, you know, all these areas kind of on the outskirts of the Beltway are money-making areas where the trips are tend to be a little bit longer. You know, an extra mile or two adds on. They, um, there's not as much traffic. There's not as much traffic lights and congestion as you, as you get down in the, the heart of downtown city so you don't end up getting stuck playing the time game as much you can get from one trip to another quicker and you know that's that's how you make money guys that is how you make money you know I don't want to get stuck down in downtown where there's a traffic light every block and it's just red light red light red light red light red light the whole way when I can drive in the suburbs and a lot of them aren't red lights a lot of them are you know roads and you just you just get there so that's my um, that's my adventure for Friday um, so final final answer numbers are roughly three hundred dollars for the past 24 hours you know we'll call that 2 p.m. Friday to about 1 p.m. Saturday when I called it quits so, well, it's really earlier than that. It's really like, you know, 11, 30, 12 o'clock when I took a nap. But just to call it so that now anything I do from, you know, 2 o'clock on as I'm heading down to D.C. will be Saturday numbers that will count for Saturday. And I will do the math and, you know, back out whatever was done this morning so that you guys have a sense of what's what. But I'm looking for another 600, guys. 
Um, I've got most of my power, bo power drive bonus in. I've got almost all the regular trips in, I think except one. My acceptance rate is fine. I need 14 more power hour rides. And then tonight, there's power hour from 7 to 9 p.m. and then from 10 to 1 a.m. So minus that 9 to 10 a.m. window, or 9 to 10 p.m. window, which makes no sense to me. If, they're, if they were gonna do it, they should just left it from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. You know, that whole time is power hour for Lyft. So I should be able to pick up my 14 trips fairly easily in that, you know, one, two, three, four hour block. Um, and at least get the 65 bonus. That would really be, you know, let's get one in the bag and then next week we can work on the second one. Um, the power hours are the tough part, guys. They really are. You know, getting to the next level is, I think, 40 power hour trips. That's a lot. That's a lot. So, you know, we'll have to change our strategy up a little bit if we want to do that. And I, I don't know if I want to do morning driving because I live out in the suburbs and I got kids. So we'll, uh, we'll have to reconfigure that a little bit. But I want to at least be able to say that I got the one bonus just to say that I got it. And then obviously Lyft is paying well, so I'm not upset with Lyft's fares um, in general. So, you know, and I did $100 with Uber last night. Not, not even really trying, just, you know, the moments when it was quiet and I turned on both apps. Whatever came first, came first. So, um, you know, there was money to be made with Uber, but I just am disappointed with them because they won't reboot my incentives. And that frustrates the heck out of me. Because um, that's good money that I was making steadily for, you know, three months or so. For some reason or another, they've just really frustrated me. And I don't know if I need to spend a day and go to the Uber office in DC and fight my case in front of somebody. Um, you know, at this point, I feel like I've just been barking up the tree that, you know, too much, too often. You know, how, much, how many more times do I have to say there's a problem for them to realize there's a problem? So we'll see. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it because right now, you know, Lyft is, is not treating me badly and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm okay with Lyft. And it's busy. It's active, it's busy, it's steady. So there you go. So for all of you guys out there, you know, be safe on the roads tonight. It's gonna be another Arctic freezing, what did they call it? Cyclone bomb, bomb cyclone, I don't know, some cold apocalypse, you know, whatever, hell's frozen over kind of thing. Um, so just be safe, you know, run your heat on your car. Um, you know, heat is not, does not drain your gas. Your heating system, you know, works off your, uh, your engine coolant system. So it just, the hot air that your engine makes naturally heats the pipes that create heat for your car. So it's not exhaust coming in your car, but they heat the same metal, you know, ducting that, that basically creates heat. So it doesn't cost you anything. It's basically free. It's the uh, residual heat from your engine. So don't feel like you gotta be an energy conservant person and like you would in the summertime, maybe conserving your AC. Um, heat costs nothing. It's part of the process that your engine uses to diffuse its heat already. So run your heat, keep your car nice and toasty warm. Your customers will appreciate it. You know, that's typically the first thing out of their mouth when they get in your car is, holy crap, it's cold. Um, and it's, you know, it's a great little conversation starter, especially when your car is, you know, nice and toasty warm. And, you know, they can just kind of get in there and, ah, you know, just kind of soothe themselves with that heat. So, you know, do that as a customer service piece, but also to keep yourself warm. You know, why make yourself suffer if you're going to be in your car tonight in these cold temperatures? You know, keep yourself toasty warm, stay healthy, don't get sick, and, uh, you know, be safe out there, guys. So I'm going to get back into it. I am uh, I'm heading down the road. I wish you guys all the best of luck. I will report out when I quit at some point uh, in the wee hours tonight before I, uh, I take break number two. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.